Welcome to ABS TV. Today we will be talking about cooling for residential buildings. What are the needs, the pros and cons? Let me first explain why designing a good heating and cooling system is important for a climate like Melbourne. It is because heating and cooling represent an average of 59% of the total energy spent for a house in Melbourne. So energy-wise, it is important to have a good system. Different systems will take more or less space and will cost more or less money. And at the end, it is about the comfort of the occupant. The selection of a cooling system is quite similar to the selection of a heating system, yet you've got less choice. So again, look at the climate, the passive properties of the building and its function, the performance of the system, cost and any other parameters such as noise, health, client preferences, etc. Let's not wait and see our first grand reporter, Albert de Duvet. This is grand reporter Albert de Duvet. It's lovely to see you again, Mrs. Zek. Thanks for having us in your second home that you are currently renting. So we've already seen your beautiful ducted heating system. Can you tell us a little bit more about the cooling system in this house? Well, here we have an evaporative cooling system. Uh, I love it. So it's up here on the roof here. You can see the unit. Inside the unit there, there's a fan that sucks the air from the surrounding environment and then it passes the air over a constantly trickling stream of water. The air evaporates the water, which cools the air, and it's then distributed around the house. That sounds simple enough. So why do you like it so much? Oh, well, it's, firstly, it's very effective, especially on really hot, dry days. And because the air contains lots of moisture, it's nice because it doesn't dry out your skin and nose, you know. Um, and all I have to do is make sure that there's a, a window and a door open, and that makes all the air from inside flush out and be replaced by the nice, cool air from the unit. Also, it's very, very cost effective. The only um, costs are the energy to run the fan mm -hmm. and the cost of the water. Ah, lovely. So have you experienced any drawbacks when using the system? Well, I guess it does use a lot of water, um, which, you know, on hot summer days when we're in a drought is not mm -hmm. ideal. We did want to set it up to use with our rainwater tanks, but unfortunately they're only big enough for toilet flushing. Mm -hmm. We have to be careful also about stagnant water in the unit because it can breed bacteria, but fortunately there's an automatic mechanism with, which tips it out um, automatically, mm -hmm. so you don't really have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also, I suppose, on really hot, humid days, it doesn't work very well because there's already so much moisture in the air. Um, where it that can't evaporate the water very effectively, so it doesn't work so well on hot, humid days. But on those days, you know, we just use a fan to blow the air already in the house around, and that's fine. Mm. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks again for having us, Mrs. Duct. This is Albert Dujuve, back to studio. Thanks, Albert. Let's summarize the pros and cons of the evaporative cooling. Evaporative cooling system. Pros. It is relatively economical to install and cheap to run. Main energy is spent for the fan. Works great in hot and dry conditions. Cons. Use a lot of water. Doesn't work if hot and humid conditions need to open the windows to allow air circulation. Please, Magic Pens, show us how to draw an evaporative cooling system on a plan. Magic Pen!
Thanks Majid Pen and now let's meet Charlotte O'Krim with Mr. Water for a really simple design. Hello, I'm Charlotte O'Cream and I'm here at the home of Mr. Water to talk to him about his cooling systems. Yeah, hi Charlotte. So, um, yeah, look, we've got uh, pretty much a passive cooling system in this house. Um, so I'll show you over here, we have, have louver windows, um, both sides of the house, which allow for cross ventilation. Uh, up here, we've got a ceiling fan, which we use to move air around the house and keep things nice and cool. It's very economical, efficient, simple. Fantastic. And now tell me on those really hot 40 degree days, is this, does this house stay very hot? Is it very mm. hot in here? Look, it does still remain fairly warm on those really hot days. And on those really hot days, I do actually uh, open up the, the window up in the skylight here to allow heat to escape up through the, through the ceiling and out through the roof. It's something called stack ventilation. Yeah. Fantastic. But you, you're telling me it's still pretty hot. Is there anything you could do to this house to, to make it even cooler in those days? I think we could. I think we could consider planting some, uh, some more lush vegetation around the house to produce like a moist, uh, cooler microclimate. That would definitely help with the cross ventilation. We could also consider increasing the thermal mass in the house, like with a concrete floor and then doing night purges. Night purges? What's a night purge? Ah, uh, so night purges are um, taking advantage of the cooler conditions at night uh, to ventilate the house and to cool down the um, to cool down the thermal mass within the house to act as like a sort of cold battery for the next day. That's so fantastic. That's, is this a very common thing in houses or? Um, look, it's very commonly done in commercial buildings, but a lot of people are doing it in their house anyway without knowing the term. Oh, fantastic. Thanks again for another very interesting talk, Mr. Water. My pleasure. This is Charlotte O'Cream reporting for ABS TV. Back to the studio. Thanks, Charlotte O'Cream. And now let's summarize the pros and cons of the fan system. Fan systems. Pros. Very economical to install and very cheap to run. Cons. It's a limited effect, it doesn't reduce temperature in the space, but the air movement increases the comfort as the skin evaporates better, so cool down the body. So it is drafty, but you want it. Noise and conflict with the lighting can be an issue. And now, let's see the magic pen to see how to draw that on a plan. Magic pen! Thanks the magic pen, and now let's go back to Charlotte O'Cream who is meeting with Mr. Split. Hello, this is Charlotte O'Cream and I'm back in the beautiful apartment of Mr. Split to talk to him about his cooling system. Yes, this is still my apartment. So tell me about your cooling system, Mr. Split. Well, it's a Fujitsu C6.0 kilowatt H7.2 kilowatt reverse cycle split system. A and what does that mean? As I explained in the last video, that means that it can produce 6 kilowatts of cooling or 7.2 kilowatts of heating. Okay, and um, how does it work? Well, it's obviously a little complicated for you to understand, but essentially it uses the refrigeration cycle to exchange heat. This unit up here 
takes heat energy from the room and transfers it outside via the other unit. Fantastic. And does it use a lot of energy? No. Because it uses the phase change of the refrigerant, it is quite economical. Okay. And um, is, it com is it comfortable? No. Well, why is that? Well, because it produces a strong draft, which is not very pleasant, and it is noisy. The advantages are that it is quite quick to cool the room, taking only a couple of minutes, and because there are multiple units in different rooms, it is zonable. It costs between 20 and 30 cents per hour for cooling. Hmm, interesting. Thank you for that. Um, now tell me, is there any way you can upgrade this system or reduce the costs? Anything? Not really. Oh. Generally, I'm hoping to replace it with a more efficient model at the end of this one's lifespan, which is about 10 years. Oh, fantastic. Thank thanks again for letting us into your apartment and for this riveting talk about cooling. Yeah, thank you. This has been Charlotte O'Cream reporting for EBS TV. Back to the studio. Fantastic, Charlotte, and thank you very much, Mr. Split. Let's now summarize the pros and cons of the reverse cycle air conditioning system. Reverse cycle air conditioner. They are cheap to install and quite cheap to run. The reactivity is very high with a moderate maintenance. However, the cooling quality is quite poor as it is drafty and noisy. It could even be smelly if the filter is dirty. The impact of the furniture is different than other systems as the unit will be uh, installed on the wall. But you need to have access to the outside unit. So typically in Melbourne, apartment will have balcony mostly to accommodate the outside unit. Zoning is possible as each unit will be in each room with its own thermostat. And now, the magic pen to know how to draw this cooling system. Magic pen! Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoyed this episode of EBS TV. It was cooling for residential building. Keep cool. Oh, again. Yeah.